Can you see me? Yeah? Hi. How you doing? Thanks very much for coming to um, see me virtually here. Um, and uh, I'm just going to get going because I'm aware that there isn't that much time and there's loads to get through. So welcome. And um, yeah, um, I'm going to jump right in and invite you to climb aboard my COVID bus and uh, jump back to the future where it all began pretty much this very day um, a year ago. And I'm not going to go back on official news stuff as it'll probably take much too, too much time and be a bit depressing, to be quite honest. So I'm going to be my gazette here and I uh, will go onward into yesterday and, uh, well, actually, maybe a week before yesterday, because I'd just come back from, it'd been my birthday and I'd come back from um, climbing Mount Snowden with my sons and um and i got back because we're out on the wild mountain and you know nothing everything's just natural of course and and then got back and it was just kind of weird the whole thing had suddenly started going a bit strange and um and people started migrating from their offices and uh and that was quite a big thing for a lot of people. But as somebody who's never had a proper job, it really didn't make an awful lot of difference to me. But what I did know um, was that um, that the what these people would be going through when they had to start working from home. So it was kind of fun to write a piece um, <laughs> from the perspective of actually already knowing what people were going to be going through and then trying to have a bit of fun with it. So this is called the first piece, which was written on um, the... 20th of the 3rd, 2020, and it's called Working From Home. I'm working from home, it's just me. And I'm uh, being the best I can be. I've done all the tidying now, the washing, the ironing, the what and the how, and I'm texting a bit as I go, and I'm checking the gram of the post just to show that I'm keeping my platform dispersed. Um, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, diverse is the name of the game. I'm a digital nomad, I'm tweaking the frame. And there's YouTube to think about too. And then it's all about balance. I know this is true, but there's alien life on the moon. And those Nazis that taught that baboon to drive that miniature submarine to, to, to blow all those people to smithereens. But that was way back in the Second World War. I mean, just look at this clip, there's so much more. I mean, just ask me, ask me anything about Hitler. Ask me anything about Hitler. He actually died in 1963, somewhere in Argentina. Then there's crop circles, blues, and there's grays. And there's a wondrous number of ways. If studied one quickly, we'll find how vinegar benefits the body and mind and how work is not needed at all. And the secret of life is surrender. And of all the things that we think that we see are just a mirage. And we can all be free to be beautiful creatures of light. And if you want to know more, we'll just pick up the phone because let's hang out, FaceTime, anything. Because, um, I'm working from home. That's working from home. Um, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and so five days later, things felt very different. And I, I was brought up in um, Kent. And my, my um, father worked in, in uh, his civil servant worked in, in London. And the only thing I could equate it to was when the storm of 1987 came and blew down all the oak trees in Seven Oaks. And Seven Oaks became one oak. And I remember there was just this feeling of collective shock, but I think the thing about lockdown was lockdown because we all became locked down, didn't it? We were locked up, but they called it lockdown because it didn't, maybe it just sounded a bit American. Maybe that made it a bit better, but I don't know, it's still locked down anyway. But we were in that position, which was more like, I think the start of a war where you know that the shit's gonna hit the fan, but it hasn't happened yet. Whereas when obviously the, the, the storm had come and been gone, the shit had hit the fan and there were all these trees lying around everywhere and smashed up cars in the streets and, and what have you. Um, so I think it was a sort of, I, had, I only had a tiny handle on what was going on, but, and I think what then we were all locked up. And so the only thing you're allowed to do, of course, was to go out, was to go shopping and to go exercising. And so people immediately, I think we we're all in shock as well, in mild shock. So immediately the frenzy of jogging and baking began. Yeah, fine, pretty good. It's all about staying busy, uh, actually um, jogging and baking. Yes, baking and jogging and, 
and sit-ups and baking and reading and baking and chatting to friends and then jogging and baking and eating and baking and going out jogging to jog off the baking and then getting back home and then going out shopping and queuing and then baking and trying to make sense of the stuff that is happening and baking and jogging and listening to Boris then 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 to the people repeat what he's saying over and over in strange newsy voices and then baking and jogging and trying not to feel gloomy but wondering where just where the whole thing is going and jogging and baking and baking and jogging and realizing whole generations of people went through so much worse for so very much longer and that was before the invention of jogging and they didn't have the things needed for baking so feeling quite grateful for baking and jogging then going to bed and dreaming of baking and waking each morning and asking somehow has it gone back to normal and then seeing it hasn't and jogging and baking and baking and jogging and jogging and baking some more By the 30th, things had started to develop a pattern. Um, and when not jogging and baking, I think what was happening is because all this unbelievable um, amounts of, of news was starting to flood in. And of course, as we all know now, it just was changing every 30 seconds. And, and so trying to hold the pattern of what was going on and it becoming increasingly um, more obvious that nobody had a clue what was going on really. And everyone was just making everything up as they were going along. And people in suits were putting on sort of serious faces, like, you know, they actually did know what, going on and what was going on and they didn't. I and mean, I became aware that the more I tried to think about it, the more insane I began to feel. So I started meditating. And here is the um, here is here is my inner world for you. When I started uh, meditating after not meditating for a long time, so it starts off with the um, so it's the two voices. It's the of course the uh, the unchanging um, soul uh, with the ego uh, stepping in and trying to divert it from meditating. So here we go. Hey, how you doing? That's the ego. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm meditating. I'm following the breath in and out, in and out. No, you're not, you're listening to me. You are just a passing thought. I'm observing you and letting you go. Follow the breath in and out. Wow, you really are good at me meditating. Thanks, I'm definitely improving. And you didn't make your bed this morning, I noticed. And uh, I'm going to do it when I finish my meditation. And you might as well wash your sheets at the same time. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, and, and give the house a really good clean too. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, how about a spring clean? Wow, that's a really good idea. Let's really take advantage of this time at home and get everything sorted out. Yes, get everything sorted out. Snap, but what? But what? Well, I'm I'm meditating. No, you're not. You're just sitting with your eyes closed, chatting with yourself. Okay, that's enough. I'm following the breath in and out, in and out. Hey, you are just a passing thought in and out. Hey, hey, come on. We're having fun in and out, in and out. Thank you. <laughs> that's that's uh, meditating. Um, and so, the next thing I noticed with it all going on um, was um, oh, also at this time I called up a friend of mine, Paul, and said, do you want to put some music to some of these? And so he did. So they now sort of, a lot of them now move into sort of song structure, so a spoken song structure, which was really quite good to um, work in. It's my... Uh, my son is uh, a musician and a producer and we've been we were talking about song structure so it's nice to spend time with him talking about it and then putting it into practice um and so during this all these things that we all kind of noticed at the same time this was that suddenly the air traffic had stopped and the and and, and the sky seemed to be the, the light was beginning to change and i mean for people in big cities obviously if you're rural folk then you know hey but in in central london where i am it was amazing the noise had stopped and you could hear birds and uh, uh you could hear woodpeckers in hyde park and stuff like that it's really quite wild but the really really weird thing was shopping had become something like a deeply covert operation because you had to go down the street there was that could have been tumbleweed going down the street into these places and everybody was looking at everybody else as if somebody had stolen something out of their bag there was a general feeling of uh, mistrust and so i thought i'd write this thing and it's called i'm going shopping 
I'm putting on my gloves. I'm putting on my mask. I'll tell you where I'm going if you really have to ask. I'm going shopping, shopping. I'm going shopping, shopping. Tension in the air, no jet planes in the sky. I'm feeling pretty shifty, so don't look me in the eye. I'm going shopping, shopping. I'm going shopping, shopping. Stalking the aisles, making my selection, keeping my distance in the fruit and veg section. What are you doing? Why can't you see? You're not supposed to stand that close to me. So don't stand so. So don't stand so. Don't stand so close to me because I'm shopping, shopping. Yes, I'm shopping, shopping. Now I'm waddling home. I'm feeling the relief. I'm weighed down like a donkey and I'm looking like a thief, arriving like a pilgrim from a distant land. But nobody touched me till I've washed my hands because I've been shopping, shopping. Yes, I've been shopping 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 uh, and it can carry on as long as you want with the shopping shopping um and um yeah shopping that was all we had and it felt really weird really really weird and so by the 16th of april everybody had started to look miserable worried and freaked out and i think by this point people were starting to have freak outs at home um people were like um having been shorn of all the, the parts of ourselves that we, consist, we consider to be reality, or many of them, um, people were starting to have to kind of, um, you know, there were, there were things, things hitting, hitting the surface, I think, for me, for a lot of people. I was standing in a shop, actually. So I was trying to shoot a video for shopping, um, which ended up being um, a really good animation, which you can find on YouTube if you go to Shopping Orbital or Shopping Murray Lachlan Young. Um, you'll see this fantastic video for it. Um, but I was sort of I was with my phone in a queue in a shop trying to film people's feet. And I didn't realize I got too close to this guy. And he turned around and said, get out, get back, get back, get back. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is really horrible. And he was like, he was just freaking out. It's an old, older guy. And, and, I, and, I, and I was, you know, all of that sort of baby stuff when someone freaks out at you, you know, sort of all of the kind of like, I've done something wrong and there's immediate feelings of shame and weirdness. And I was like, whoa, this is really outrageous. And I just said, okay, okay, I'm really sorry. And I walked back, but I wanted to shout at him. And I was thinking, this is no good. And I was thinking, you know, there is an alternative to this. <laughs> there, is a, there is an alternative to this. And that alternative is like flipping the paradigm. And so I went home and I wrote this. I did some, I did some research actually into the muscular movement of what makes you able to smile and then into the, um, the physiological aspects of smiling. And apparently, if you smile, it makes you happy and it sets up a loop in your brain. So by forcing yourself to smile, it actually makes you happier. So that was my big, that was, that was how I said, I'm not being beaten down by this man screaming at me. Mutual suspicion creates opposition. It's time to make a change in the vibrational position. Intentionally exercising zygomaticus, orbicularis oculi results in happiness. Give them a workout every once in a while, for these are the muscles that can make you smile. Go on, smile. Go on and smile. Go on and smile it's worth your while muscles contract and then like an express train sending groovy signals back into your brain endorphins are morphing in a feedback spin resulting in production of a beautiful grin grin you get a few you could and you can fake it to make it and you can fake it to make it and you can fake it to fake it to fake it to make it then it's better than chocolate better than honey better than oodles and oodles of money in a win 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 for your mental health just look in the mirror and smile at yourself intentionally exercising zygomaticus orbicularis oculi results in happiness give them a workout every once in a while for these are the muscles that are make you smile in short when our brain feels happy we smile and when we smile our brain feels happier so go on and smile there you go <laughs> smile we can all smile it's good to smile I haven't been doing much smiling recently, actually, but so I'm, I'm trying to get back into the habit of smiling. Um, 
Then this is this is the twenty second of the fourth, so we're in, we're deep into April now, um, where we were in in London. We had great weather. I think I think pretty much the whole of um, the British Isles um, were were bathed in sunlight, and that would mean uh, the Republic of Ireland as well, I would imagine, um, and bits of Wales probably, and Cornwall, the lower parts of Cornwall, um, on and off. So, um, and of course the east coast of Scotland, maybe not the west. Now, so this is something that happened, something really weird um, that I suddenly, and I think a lot of people got this all at the same time. Like we all seem to be getting lots of things all at the same time during, during the first lock up down. And, um, and it was this thing that I, I remember um, this uh, meeting this, old man once when I was when I was very young and he was he was, he was uh, actually I better not get into this because because we've only got so much time but it suddenly was bedtime again every day it was always just like Fuck, what happened to the day it's bedtime again and then this was the days just seemed to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and and it was just like getting into bed all the time and um so here we go this is a piece called how did it get to be bedtime again how did it get to be bedtime again? How did I get to be brushing my teeth? How did it get to be bedtime again? Although I must say it's a blessed relief to be finished today with the workings of time and all of the things that go in between that decided to get up and go their own way as my life has slipped into a nebulous dream. Whatever happened to Saturday night? And whatever happened to Sunday morning? And whatever happened to 11 o'clock? They've all disappeared, not a shred of a warning. And I was supposed to be writing a book and learning to crochet and play the guitar and sorting out all of the stuff in that box with all of the time, all of the time, all of the time, oh so near, but yet so far. And morning was gone with a blur and a flash and the afternoons only three hours. And that somehow condensed into 33 minutes. It's like I'm the subject of magical powers. And then there's evening. Yes, evening is evening, honest, reliable, and undisputably so, six hours long and dripping with promise. But it's gone in a blink and I've nothing to show. How did it get to be bedtime again? How did I get to be brushing my teeth? How did it get to be bedtime again? Although I must say, it's a blessed relief. Did you hear a massive crash halfway through that? I don't know what's going on upstairs. There's, a, there's, a, there's an old man who we believe is a spy who lives next door, who drags furniture around late at night. And I did actually go and uh, buzz on his buzzer and say, if you need anything, um, uh, let me know. And uh, he just drags the furniture around. So I presume he's all right. Um, so with percussion from him, we continue. Um, coffee shop coffee is all we wanted along with one or two other things. So here's a list of those. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Bumping into strangers, wandering around, earning money, lying on the ground, buying paint, one night stands, pubs, poundland, shaking hands, haircuts, parties, stop the clock. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Internal silence, an outside space, going dancing, the human race, coughing in public, the walk of shame, the smell of people, bus and train, hugs, kisses, stop the clock. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Being alone, not being alone. 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 A trip to Whitby, stop the clock. Coffee shop, coffee in a coffee shop. Thank you. It's a quick one. Um, what time did we start? So we've done, was it 7.30? It's real, uh, so we've done 20 minutes and it's 40 minutes long. Maybe I'm going too fast. There's always that possibility, you see, because I haven't done this show before. This is the first time I'm, I'm doing it. But if I do run too quickly, then I've got other stuff. I've got thousands of other poems, so we're all right. Which could go, we could go on for, for possibly, I think I probably, yeah, I have actually literally got thousands of poems, so we could go on for, for months. So the idea of me being afraid of underrunning is really not a problem. Okay, so now we've got, we get to the fifth, of the fifth, wow, May, we're into May already, 2020. Something had to begin, as when, and when it was something else was becoming more apparent that certain sectors of society 
and the economy um, were starting to, so some were tanking and some were doing really well. And um, the rest of us were just clinging on by our fingernails. But this is what I think mainly people were doing. I do not know what day it is. I guess it's what they say it is. It's kind of like I've been away and just got back from holiday. I'm having quite the strangest dreams. The weather's holding up, it seems. I'm keeping it informal, embracing the new normal. And you ask me how I do it, and there's really nothing to it because it's click, click, click. Goes the mouse, foot, steps up to the house, ring, ring, ring. It's the same dopamine hit to the brain because I've got a delivery coming. Yes, I've got a delivery coming. Uh, yes, I've got a delivery coming. A yoga mat, a magic mix, a chainsaw and a hockey six, an incense and a crystal light, resistance band, vaniculite. It isn't like I'm in a hurry, waiting for banana curry, dressing down and feeling groovy, like I'm in a crazy movie. Click, 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 and goes the mouse, footsteps up to the house, ring, ring, ring. It's the same dopamine hit to the brain because I've got a delivery coming. Uh, yes, I've got a delivery coming. Uh, yes, I've got a delivery, got a delivery, got a delivery coming. Seven weeks, three jigsaws, 47 days, two home haircuts, 1,128 hours, nine quizzes, 667,680 minutes, nine pizzas, four million seconds, a polytunnel, kombucha, pot plants, but everything's gonna be okay because I've got a delivery coming. Uh, yes, I've got a delivery coming. Uh, yes, I've got a delivery coming. Thank you. Um, right, well, moving swiftly on. Um, right, well, we got to the 13th, which I think, I think it all happened on the 20th, I'm not sure, but the 13th of um, May, suddenly in um, England, I'm not quite sure what happened in the other um, nations of the United Kingdom, um, but garden centers opened up and there was something, I don't know what, what it was about the garden centers, but it just felt like this hallowed event, better than Christmas, better than anything, as people suddenly, as these Hordes and queues of cars appeared outside garden centers and the, uh, and the, um, the un underprepared youths <laughs> who were in the car parks trying to direct to all these frenzied people who were just kind of going in there and coming out with enormous amounts of plants and everyone was getting into the garden and getting their hands into the earth. So this is called um, Meet Me at the Garden Center. Who am I? Who was I? And who will I be? The future is out there, but no one can see. I want to feel normal, but I can't remember. And maybe we can find out at the garden center, at the garden center. You can come and meet me at the garden center. And we could push a trolley at the garden center, at the garden center, at the garden center. Begonias, Mahonias, potted palms, petunias, annuals keep it topical, some bamboo takes it tropical, fluffy ferns for shady places, hedging plants with little faces, solar powered water features, grasses cute like little creatures garden center. You can come and meet me at the garden center and we could be together at the garden center, at the garden center, at the garden center. The smell is so comforting, melting my tears, so healthy and wholesome, it moves me to tears. There's just so much growing, don't know where to start, but the man in the mask says two meters apart at the garden center. You better keep your distance at the garden center. There's hand sanitizer at the garden Garden center at the garden center at the push 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 the trolley push 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 the trolley push 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 the trolley at the garden center thank you then pithy short pieces there's there is a a phenomenal piece of music to that um, so I really do recommend you go and uh, um, look that up on YouTube afterwards garden center um, and of course, the other major factor, and we're sort of starting to, the interesting thing about this journey now for me is that, we're, is, that, is that we started this time last year and we're kind of finishing again this kind of type of year as well. And so the whole thing has become even weirder 
So we've got in London, the 12th of April, shops are opening. So things will feel a bit normal then. But this time last year, everything was kind of just sort of um, kind of starting. And then there was another one just before Christmas as well, I think. So it's all, it's all what on earth has happened to our brains, but the, the, what on earth has happened to the brains of the people? I mean, the, the, the pe there's lots of people in this whole thing that have had, had it hard and the elderly have had it hard. There's been a lot of people trapped at home. There's a little bit of, you know, can't imagine what, what, how difficult it's been for people in, uh, in care homes, um, the ones that have survived. Um, but for parents and children stuck at home together in homeschooling, I know some of the kindest, most reasonable parents I've ever met in my life, the nicest people who would never ever even say, say anything mean to their children at all. You say to them, hey, how are you doing? And they go, well, I'm really struggling actually because I, I've turned into a monster this week. And I've, I've, never, I've, never, I've never actually experienced myself going down that road before, but I screamed and shouted at my children and I saw fear in their eyes. And so that's, you know, so God knows, <laughs> God knows what's happened to the bad ones. But yeah, we've got to try and, you've got to try and see the humorous side. Otherwise, what is it, what do they say? If you don't laugh, you'll cry. So it's after 3.30. There's no one around. The playgrounds are empty. You can't hear a sound. No children at the bus stop or at the train station. Just sudden transmutation to a cyborg nation. Homeschooling. It's two plus two. Homeschooling. Embracing the new. Homeschooling. Put that down. Homeschooling. Stop messing around. Questions, meltdowns, work, rest and play. Our motivation is slipping away. Not enough bandwidth, we're going berserk. The teacher is giving everyone too much work. Homeschooling, it's two plus two. Homeschooling, embracing the new. Homeschooling, tied to the screen. Homeschooling, you know what that means. The pressure is building, we're hitting the max. The children are asking for too many snacks, challenging behavior and ludicrous claims, rewarded with bribery, then video games. Two plus two is nine. Two plus four is 10. Eight plus four is 16. You know that's not right, so let's do it again. Homeschooling, it's two plus two. Homeschooling, embracing the new. Homeschooling, put that down. Homeschooling, stop messing around. Kind of messed up the ending there, but um, that's, the, that's the homeschooling. Um, so that's, we're now approaching, we've got 15 minutes late left and I have actually reached, no, I don't know actually. Anyway, well, I'm just gonna keep going, it's fine. Because I said, I've got loads of other stuff which I can bring up on my computer. Well, at this point, which was the 27th of the 5th, 2020, if you hadn't shaved it off, then most people were looking pretty ragged in the hair department. Um, and uh, I think that was, you know, we, would, we were now at this point in sight of the end and people were just like, looked like, looked like they'd come back from some expedition into either across the desert or out of the jungle. And I remember seeing, seeing people in the park with the most outrageous hair. Um, and so this is uh, this is a piece which I, I think a lot of people, as you can see, I've I've, I've taken the I've bought some clippers. Uh, that was my my end uh, my end point. Um, and this is um, this is where people are at and where some people are at now as we still wait for hairdressers to open again. I can take the social distancing vibrations that I'm whispering, the cabin fever, missing friends, the feeling it might never end, the crazy things I see and read. There's just one thing I really need. There's just one weird thing I really need. Tea coffee or matcha i need a haircut from a proper hairdresser need a haircut i need a double espresso need a haircut i need a chit chat chat i need a haircut about things that don't matter so what sort of style were you thinking about i keep up with the latest news i cultivate my social views the gossip and the ebb and flow the shifting of the status quo it doesn't matter what i say because no one's listening anyway no one's listening anyway no one's listening anyway i need a haircut is it too much to ask i need a haircut i feel i'm tied to the mask i need a haircut oh well 
it just can't go on. I need a haircut. Oh, and I might just go blonde, a mullet or a demi wave, an afro bob, a pixie fade, a frosted tips and luscious layers, buzz cut like a football player's highlights in your pompadour. Shall we tint a little more? Shall we tint a little more? Shall we tint a little more? Hello, this is a salon. Just to let you know, Daniel's had a cancellation. It is now available at fr from Friday at 3 p.m. Is that okay? Fantastic. Yeah. All right. We'll see you then. I need a haircut. I can't wait anymore. I need a haircut. I got my roots on the floor. I need a haircut. I need a chit chat chat. I need a haircut about things that don't matter. Going anywhere nice on your holidays? Thank you. Um, oh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm really enjoying this. It's kind of be nice if we're all in the same room, but it's also quite cool because, you know, there's people in different parts of the world and we are all in the same room kind of thing. Um, so the 3rd of the 6th, 2020. Um, I think the load of the lockdown experience was really beginning to tell and it felt to me that that was mainly due to the fact that enough time had elapsed that it was possible to gain for the first time a bit of perspective. Um, and I think with that perspective, for me, I was just like, wow, it's, it's, been, it's been a bit of a ride, you know? It's been it's been a bit a bit kind of weird, and I have been definitely um, like I've been a bit up and down, to be honest. I've been a little bit up and down. I've been a little bit up and down, a bit ooh, bit ah, bit near, bit far. Yes, I've been a little bit up and down. You see, I was quietly doing my thing before the COVID bell went ding, 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 and the shops and the pubs and the schools and the clubs and the streets and the roads with a rubber dub dub suddenly came to an end. And distinctly between now and then, I've been a little bit up and down. Yes, I've been a little bit up and down, a bit um pa pa, a bit tra la la la. Yes, I've been a little bit up and down. There have times I haven't been at my best, a bit one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and I wouldn't say I was losing the plot. Just struggling to tell the why from the what and the false from the true and the me from the you and eventually just what we're all going to do because I've been a little bit up and down. I've been a little bit up and down. A bit this bit, that bit, rat tat tat Yes, I've been up a little bit up and down. But then I pull back the focus from all the hocus pocus and look out at the star-filled sky and let go of the what and why, surrender to the here and now. Let Mother Nature take a bow beneath the twisting Milky Way and understand that it's okay. It's okay that I, I've been a little bit up and down. Yes, I've been a little bit up and down, a bit um pa pa a bit tra-la-la-la. Yes, I've been a little bit up and down. We've all been a bit up and down, haven't we, over the last year? <laughs> Give ourselves a big, a big hug for being, for, for having all been a bit up and down. Um, and so now, I suppose, with this one, we come a sort of uh, a full circle, really, because um, and obviously we are trying not to wish our lives away, but um, there is um, that burning question which seems to live almost permanently in our minds these days. Um, are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? I'm not really sure where I'm going. I'm not really sure where I've been. I'm not really sure of the now and the then. I'm not sure of the bit in between. I'm drifting along on the river. What else do they want me to do? I think I'll let go of the paddle and lie down inside the canoe because I'm not really sure what I'm saying from under this beautiful mask. And I'm not really sure if I care anymore, but there's one thing I'd like to ask is, is the thing I thought I thought, a thing I really thought I thought, and is the thing I thought I bought the thing I think I think I caught? And are we nearly there? Yet? Are we nearly there 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 yet? I pendulum from up to down, not knowing the bottom from top. But then I started enjoying it all, except when I went to the shops. I stood upon the dotted line, applauded every Thursday night. I washed my hands and did the dance of staying suitably uptight. I listened to nightly bulletins. I've done what they asked me to do. But really, there's just one simple thing I'd like to ask of you. And is the thing I think I thought, the thing I really thought I thought, is the thing I thought I bought, the thing I think I thought I caught, and are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? And are we nearly there yet? 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 And was the way that I was sent, the way that I was really meant to go, perhaps to some extent, because I think I might have went, and so there is no need to fear, because 
I am already here, but still it feels my solemn task to move my, uh, my mouth and, and blindly ask, are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? Thank you. Um, now I'll just see if I can pull up, because I can do my whole, there's just one, there's one more. I've got, I can do two more, but there's one more, which is the secret hair dresser. Let's see if it comes up. Of course it doesn't. Um, I've got one of these computers that's supposed to, uh, maybe if I put I'm the secret hairdresser in front of it. I'm the secret. I knew I should have done this, but I didn't. No. All right. Well, okay. No, I'm not going to open my other computer. This is a piece which um, wasn't actually written as part of this group of, um, of, of pieces of spoken word and poetry, but it feels like it's quite a good way to, um, to sort of finish the whole thing. But I'm just looking at the time and I'm thinking, I oh, know 40 minutes is fine, yeah. So I'll make this the last one, um, unless there's a, an encore. Um, but it's quite difficult to know an encore because you can't hear anything. But anyway, we'll get to the end of this and then we'll see what's happening. But this is a piece which is um, to do, I, I suddenly, I, I did this for BBC Six Music and it had such a, a really good response because I think it, it, it does look into the, the mental health aspect of what's been going on. And, um, and I think that um, I certainly have become aware of the power of negative thoughts and, and also, and, and, and the invasiveness of uh, negativity and also unwanted thoughts, whether they're negative or not. And, um, and so I thought what I would do is start actually looking into the technical means of how to deal with negative thoughts. And it turns out there are, there are many different ways of, of dealing with them. And they kind of all come down to pretty much the same thing. So what I've tried to do is distill the idea of how to deal with unwanted thoughts and put them into this piece. And it's called Negative Thoughts. Negative thoughts, oh, they come and they go. And sometimes they come a lot more than they go. For thoughts create feelings and feelings then feel. And that's why it's easy to feel that they're real because when they arrive, they suggest that they're you and that you should do just what they say you should do. And slowly the negative thoughts can begin to widen the door and then let themselves in and then do what they like and say what they please and stifle your life with their negative squeeze. So why not breathe in? and exercise choice. And why not breathe out and say no to the voices and say I'm worth more, much, much more than all that, and that negative voices are uncool and old hat and get used to calling the negative out and slowly it turns from a scream to a shout, to a murmur, a whisper, and then best of all, the negative voice will one day become nothing at all unless it speaks nicely and says, let's have fun, or suggests quite warm-heartedly what might be done for, why would you possibly talk to yourself in a way that you'd not talk to anyone else? So why not decide that it's time to get free and stand up to the deeply uncool voice of negative T? Thank you. Well, it seems we have time for Another one, and I'm just looking here and seeing what I've got. Um, um, I did a bunch of schools yesterday. Um, ah, here we go, this is a good one. Good one to finish with. Um, just, it's not really anything to do with, I've got one which lists all the motorways in the United Kingdom. <laughs> it goes on a bit. Um, and it does have, it does have all, the, all the motorways in, in, uh, in Northern Ireland, of course. Um, Okay, so I'm looking for, ah, yeah, well, how, how about this? This is, this is fun as well. So I'll, I'll finish on this one. And it's, um, it's, it's one of my favorite ever um, things from the news. And, um, and it's about, um, there, there was a newspaper headline and, um, and it said, dog drives tractor. And, um, 
and it was about it was a it was a border collie that drove off in a tractor um, heading up the M74 before crashing into the central reservation, or losing control of the vehicle and, and uh, um, crashing into the central reservation. And of course, everybody knows that um, border collies are, are, I think it's poodles are the most intelligent. Poodles, Shih Tzus and border collies are incredibly intelligent dogs. And if you don't, um, and, and, and also um, border collies are working dogs. And if they're not exercised or worked properly, they start to get ideas. And clearly Don, the border collie, had found himself in a situation where he was obviously underworked and had started getting ideas. And after researching into, the prod, into what happened, it's my firm belief that Don, the border collie, was actually making a break for it to the Amalfi Coast in Italy to become a jazz musician um, and, and live a life of a bohemian out there. Um, so this is for Don, um, and it's done in sort of jazzy style, and I'll sign off after this. So before that, I will say thank you so much for coming, and, um, and I hope you enjoyed the virus diaries. And um, this, all of the virus diaries are going to be out in a record, um, probably with the first release coming on about the 12th of April and then running right the way through um, for about a month. And, and it's, I think it's gonna come out on vinyl as well. But anyway, back to Don the Border Collie. Maybe he was tired of just working for the man or the vibe on the farm was getting him down. Maybe he'd seen just one sheep too many and he was done with all the running around. And Don fell into an existential crisis, started reading Bukowski in bed and he woke up that bright April morning and he heard a little voice in the back of his head say, drive Don, drive Don, drive Don, drive. Go while you can, man, you go survive. Jump on the gas, lay some rubber and blow. Go doggy, go doggy, go, go, go. Well, they say he just sat in the passenger seat. Well, I tell you, that's not what I heard. I heard he waited for his moment, pulled off the brake, stamped his paw on the pedal, and whilst flipping the bird, for just one dog bright second, he could see his future open wide as he smashed through the fence of the M74. Don saw the turning of the tide. He saw clear blue sky with a pen in his paw, lying by day on the beach white sand, writing beat lyrics in a moleskin pad at night playing pickup with a bebop band. Now they're making out he couldn't take the pressure. They're saying he just couldn't carry the load. They're saying he crashed into the central reservation. Well, I say they ran him off the road because people can't handle a collie with vision. They'd never let that cat get the cream because it's throwing its fetch and it's whistle and heel and they don't dig a dog with a dream. So next time you see a pooch in a motor trying to get the stick into gear, understand he may not just be playing about and make sure you call out and make sure he hears you say drive doggy, drive doggy, drive, drive, drive. And go while you can, man, you gotta survive. Jump on the gas, lay some rubber and blow. Go doggy, go doggy, go, go, go. Thank you very much, Imagine Festival, um, and I uh, hope you have a fabulous rest of lock up, lockdown, and uh, power to the people. <laughs>